when, when we went into lockdown, in fact, I think it was, I think it was the first day of lockdown. My, my neighbor works at Kew Gardens. Okay, I'm an American, everybody, but actually based in sunny Twickenham um, <laughs> in England. And so we went into lockdown. My neighbor was actually working from home at Kew Gardens. And so, you know, lucky one wasn't furloughed. Um, the next day, next first day of lockdown, I see him hum, hop on his bike and, you know, blazing out of, out of here. And I go, you know, Philip, where are you going? He goes, ah, I have to go back to work. <laughs> None of the files were available remotely. Right. So so they'd sent their employees home like we all did. Um, and everything was server based in the office. And it was just, you know, it was a perfect illustration. Day one of lockdown that people aren't ready for this, you know, and, and relatively large organizations. So um, so SAS backup service. So what we're talking about now, you know, we've been kind of talking about the front end and protection and training um, and identi identifying these threats. Um, I guess to some extent, backup is kind of last line of defense. Right. If all of those items are not enough and it still gets through and your data is breached or accessed, um, you know, do you have a backup? And, and for that matter, with SaaS services like Microsoft 365 or Salesforce, why do you even need to back it up? The vendor does that, right? Um, and, and a lot of people assume that that's the case, that it's taken care of. It's not. Um, and there's really three reasons why you need to be backing up any cloud-based service. The first one is just the fact that it's in the cloud doesn't mean that the data is safe, right? You can still have accidental or, or malicious data loss. Um, I, we, one of our first customers, trial customer, um, was a large Salesforce um, a marketing company, and they had a massive data loss due to an angry employee. Um, it was a, a counseling session that went wrong. It ended up in termination. They had not revoked her access prior to that. She went back, deleted thousands of, of contacts and leads, did a hard delete, and walked out the door. So, you know, it can happen quickly and unexpectedly, um, and there's nothing within that service that allowed them to recover those records since a hard delete was performed. Um, the other reason, um, and a, a very important one, is that the, the services that the, the vendors offer, and it's not just Microsoft, it is Google and Salesforce, Box, Dropbox, they're good, they're, they're, they're short-term item level protection and retention, right? It's, it's versioning in, in SharePoint, and OneDrive, and all of the other services. It's the second stage recycle bin, right? First stage and second stage, only the admin can get to. Um, it's, it's exchange online archive, uh, lit, litigation holds in some cases, but none of those are point in time backup and recovery, right? It's short term, it's 30 to 90 days. And if you look at this, this point on the slide about um, IBM study, and I think there've been other studies too, the, the average duration to detect a breach is, is over six months. And we're talking 200 days in some cases. So a 90 day, you know, um, archival or, or um, recycle bin, even versioning doesn't give you the ability to go back six, seven months a year and recover a mailbox, a site collection, a document library um, in, in any way. You know, it's just not possible in that case. And, and the, the vendors, is, as James was saying, they, they do tell you that Microsoft, I think it's number six in their, their terms of service. And it's very straightforward. It says you are responsible for your data. And we recommend that you back it up on a regular basis using a third party backup service. Um, Salesforce has the same kind of point, and so does Google. Um, it's, it's consistent across the SaaS industry. Um, and they build this all on a shared responsibility model. They're, what they say as a vendor, and, and it, rightly so, is that they are responsible for the infrastructure. They take care of disaster recovery. You know, if an earthquake strikes, if, if anything strikes, for that matter, they can recover because of the replication and failover built into their systems. Okay, What they can't guarantee is that if you had an angry employee or a hack, um, six months ago, you can get that data back, okay? And they make that clear, again, as we said in, in their, um, their, their terms of service and in their documentation, okay? And then on to the next slide, James, just want to talk about um, really the, the benefits of, of backing up SaaS. It's really three points. You know, I, I mentioned that the, um, the, the providers are actually responsible for disaster recovery. Um, so, so what are we? Um, we're business continuity, it's really what it's all about. We want to make sure that if there's a data loss, whether it's accidental or malicious, you can recover that data without impacting your business operations or your, your, your customers can recover without impacting their operations. Um, also minimizing legal risk. Um, there's features uh, in our system where you could actually export um, all deleted items for the life of the mailbox. I've seen customers use that when they're going into court um, litigation over, let's say, a, a fraudulent activity of an employee. You know, we can... By having a backup system with that data um, in, in immutable um, storage that can't be altered, they can present that as you know, uh, evidence that 
um, there was communication with an employee to somebody else about a specific action. Um, and then the last one is the, the regulatory compliance. Now, it's funny, I think a lot of times when we're thinking about GDPR and the and UK Data Protection Act of GDPR, I'm not sure how to say that anymore, um, but we think of right to erasure and getting rid of the data, right? You can't keep it too long. You have to, <laughs> you have to get rid of it if they ask. But there's also very specific requirements, Article um, 32 and, the, and the, the, you know, the principles of GDPR, the integrity and compliance, that say you have to have those measure, measures in place um, to protect that data from accidental or, or malicious loss. You know, so there's, there's, I think, abundant <laughs> evidence that you need to back up the data, although there's still a lot of confusion in the industry, believing that the, the providers do back it up for you, which is not the case. Okay. And Thanks, that's really what I wanted to cover. Yeah, I know we're, we're, we've got some other people to get through. Can so I... Well, can, can I just add to that um, my experience? I mean, I told you the other day, Murray, when um, last, was it this Christmas? Hard to tell with COVID, but the, I think it was last mm -hmm. Christmas. Um, my mailbox on Office 365 became corrupted and I've like, I don't know, 20 or 30, 40 gigabyte mailbox. Microsoft were trying to fix it for um, a few days. And then they said, um, you have to back up and restore your data, which if I did it as Microsoft was saying, was going to literally take like a week and just be a nightmare. But um, using um, the Office 365 backup cloud tool, we just created a new mailbox and um, restored easily. It's like took five minutes. The, the mailbox, of course, took a couple of days to download, but um, so simple. So it really shows me the power of, of the software. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. And, you know, we talk a lot about uh, what's a nefarious activity, I guess, in this call, right? Mm -hmm. Bad guys out to get you. But you know what? I've done the same thing. Uh, I was syncing my phone and, and deleted my, my mail instead of wiping the phone. And all of a sudden, I started literally seeing the mails being deleted out of my mailbox. So, yeah, we do it. We do it sometimes out of, you know, of ignorance. I'm in my case, but um, it does happen or accidental you know, corruption of the data that has to be recovered. So good point. Mm -hmm. 